We all want to be sustainable and we all want to be green. In reality, what does that mean to most of us? In 1987, the UN Brutland Commission defined sustainable development as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Report of the World Commission on Environment and Development, 10th of January 2008. In the main, the current focus on sustainability is carbon-centric and related to greenhouse gases and consequently pollution. However, this narrow view is actually unsustainable. We have 4 billion people joining the global human population by 2100 and 26 million in the UK alone. 26 million people in the UK who need housing, schools, places of work, places of leisure, hospitals and green spaces. The RAC estimates that there will be 37 million cars on the road by 2020, growing by 3% a year or a 240% increase by 2100. Where will we put all the buildings and cars? So how do we meet the needs of the present without compromising future generations? Let's look at resources. Land. Land is a finite quantity. We cannot grow or create more land. The land is also not all ours to use. We have to share it with nature. The biodiversity of the earth supports mankind and we cannot use all the land exclusively. Animals and trees live in harmony with nature. We can only continue to survive if we keep in balance with nature. A quick example is the humble bee. No bees, no pollination, no food. Contrary to popular belief, we need nature to survive. We need balance. Nature is also our laboratory. The latest anti-malarial tablets are derived from a tree bark and certain heart medications such as digoxin are derived from plants. Here are two images of two typical towns in the UK, Hemel Hampstead and Rickmansworth, presented in slow time frame sequence spanning 60 years. The red shows the growth of urbanisation and population growth in this period, with greenbelt land being utilised by successive governments to meet the needs of the growing population. As you can see, the red spreads and grows out, consuming land, the image is remarkably like the growth of cancer in humans. It spreads and consumes the sufferer, who eventually dies. If we follow the logic, using land inefficiently in the same manner will lead to the same prognosis. We cannot afford to house the UK and the world's population by simply spreading out. Plants and the CO2 cycle. Plants absorb carbon dioxide or CO2, and humans breathe out CO2. Cars produce CO2 gas, and oil-run electricity power stations also produce CO2. Therefore, if we produce more CO2, we need more plants to absorb CO2. Plants need land. We need more planting and more forests, not less. For example, taking land for development, a policy adopted in the Brazilian rainforest, is decreasing the absorption of CO2 and is accelerating climate change. This analogy is akin to someone having lung disease, making it difficult for them to breathe, and then operating on this person to remove the healthy part of their lungs. Plants, trees, forests, and the ocean plankton are the Earth's lungs, and we are destroying them, making it harder for the human species to breathe. Our children will feel the effects of our actions. The UK government white paper on the broken housing market recognises this and calls for higher density mixed developments with on-site amenities such as gyms, retail, cinemas, learning and leisure. In essence, a vertical village. The solution is fairly simple. Instead of only using 30 to 35% of brownfield land and using the rest for surface parking, why not put cars underground? They are safer in a garage and do not need light. Using more of the land currently allotted for parking and hard standing, for housing, offices, hospitals and our human civilization, leaves more land for nature. Yes, we will have to live closer together, build communities within buildings, and go higher and lower into the ground to store cars. This is the only impact of using land more effectively. Climate change and pollution. Emissions is a term used for a byproduct of a chemical reaction to produce energy such as burning oil or coal. CO2 is an emission, methane is an emission, but there are many, many more that are given off by burning fossil fuels. These emissions are a major contributor to the pollution, which, according to the WHO, is prematurely killing more than 12.6 million people globally per annum. In five years, this is more than the number of people who died in World War II. The solution to saving lives and climate change is simple. Develop cars and buildings that do not produce emissions. 
zero emissions equal zero CO2 and zero pollutants. This means climate change is avoided. There are zero emission electric cars, but they still use electricity powered from fossil fuel burning or nuclear power stations. There are no buildings that produce zero emissions. Until now, Lumiere has designed and is developing zero emission buildings, which also provide sufficient energy to power electric cars for the residents on site. The Beacon, the Moors and all developments from Lumiere are the world's first zero emission developments ushering in a new era for the globe. At Lumiere, we believe sustainability means using all resources wisely, energy, land, water and air, and providing communities for people to work, live, play, learn and hopefully be happy.